Okay, my outstanding friends, this is going to be very interesting. Velikovsky is my hero. He wrote a book called Worlds in Collision. Now, this is by Carl Sagan. He said, did a near collision of a comet with Earth cause manna to fall in the Sinai and the sun to stand still over Gibeon? Now, this is Carl Sagan taking this somewhat seriously. Now, I followed Velikovsky very carefully, and I wrote a book about him because he was so destroyed, and I was so upset by what they did to this fabulous researcher. He went and got all the documents through the historical records of every culture. Even ones that never talked to each other, they all had basically the same story. Same basic sort of dates, well, the same date, and they had all the same sort of story, that the earth really literally almost cooked, and the oceans boiled, and the waters boiled, and that's what caused all my mud fossils. That's what preserved all of the mud fossils in the man. They were like parboiled, and then they dried out and became stone. And I'm going to show you how this, I'm going to show you some right now. Okay, these are the mud fossils, and this is what a regular lung looks like anatomically. See that little flap at the bottom of each of these lungs? The lung itself is inside here, and I have them in all these variations, all the way down to the alveoli, which is here. The pleura is very dense. You see how thick it is? It wraps around the lung. And this little flap, it just hangs there, and they don't mention it. And it's this flap right here. All right, and it's it's a it's a latch. It literally is a latch. Now they just show it sort of draping around there, but it it is a latch. I'm I technically call this now the spurlock. <laughs> Why not? Might as well take credit for it. And they all have it. I'm going to show you, and I'm going to keep saying this is a spurlock, this is a spurlock, because this is not known yet. And this is what your body is literally constructed, is, is held together by. And, and they're up at the top, too. They're at the bottom, they're at the top, so your lungs can move around, but they can't just go flopping around inside of you. All right, lungs preserved extremely well because of the blood. Blood was the preservative. Now, this one here has no pleural whatsoever on it. You see it? It's all the way down. You see all those little holes? That's these alveoli. That's what it is. Some of them still had some blood left in them. There's the spurlock. You see it right there? <laughs> and this is the alveoli, and some of that blood came out. You see it? on those little spots. After it comes out of the ground, sometimes there's a lot of blood in it. I'll show you another one. Wait, you see the other one I show you. Now, this had, that's where the spurlock is. It comes down here on this one. And this is the type of fabric you have normally on them, if nothing eroded at all off of them. See, this has complete pleura. This has complete no pleura. This has half and half. <laughs> this is the same as this. And this is the same as that. It was halfway eroded. And they're all flat, though. Because I, I believe this was all in a flood. This one is beyond that one. This one is eroded down to the point where you can still see some red blood in there. But almost everything has been evacuated. This must have been in some more acidy, salty, I don't know. But it took all of the tissue off, gone. And then it evacuated all of the alveoli. This saturated the alveoli with quartz, silicon dioxide. That's why they say veins of quartz. They will fill in where the veins are and the, and the arteries and alveoli and all that stuff. And of course you saw these two. There's the spurlock on that one. This one had to be saw it. And that's the, the iron meteorite. And I had, I had dozens and dozens and dozens of lungs. They're just coming out. Because everybody, every creature had at least one or two. All right, remember I talked to you about that spurlock on the piece of meat? There it is right there when it first came out of the ground. It's been sitting around here for 10 years or so. But it's still, you know, it's a rock. And that's the latch. Now, 
look at this. This is the anatomical of actually someone that was having a problem with a latch. Spurlock, right there. It's torn. It's holding whatever this was into whatever this is attached to. And that's how your body is, is all structurally connected, basically, is through these spurlocks. There's one on every organ, there's one on every connection between muscles and tendons and all that stuff. You see this lung that was partially eroded and this is the pleura? There's the spurlock on that. They all have that little latch that holds them in. See, there's a lung right there. There's a little one. It's almost completely turned to quartz. And there's the spurlock on that one. Here it is in the microscope. Now, you're, all gonna see, you're also going to see some biology here. Some redness here and there. You see it? This is, and, and it's basically turned to quartz. You see where the alveoli holes were? And this was the side where it connected, where the big tubes came in. But it basically turned to quartz. Some of them, as I showed you, one of them was basically 100% quartz. And this was on its way. This is the other side. Anything can turn into anything, depending upon what it's, the, the conditions that it's exposed to. Let me show you a lung that really preserved. All right, this is a friend of mine, Gary Evans, over in England. He's in a mud flat, and he sees this, and he figures, well, it's interesting. He sees those little divots, and he breaks off the end, and he sees some crazy-looking stuff. So he, I, I think this is one piece, and he took the other piece home. I think this is either the same piece or, or another piece, I can't remember, this goes back quite a few years. And he brought it home and cracked it open and this is what he found. This, this might be the same piece. And these are alveoli tubes that come down to feed the lung and that's the surface of the lung. And that's what they do. I, I showed you one here that's... Uh, this is the, the kind of texture they take on on the surface. Now, his was sealed on the surface with that texture, but inside he still had all the, the blood and everything. I mean blood. Where do you see the other ones? Now, this is exactly what you expect to find in a lung, is a lot of black and a lot of red, because you, what you're doing is you're adding oxygen. And it turns the black into the red. And the same thing in hearts. You're going to find one side is red, one side is sort of blackish. And, um, but these are all the tubing that runs into the lung. Now, this is where mud comes from. This is where mud comes from. And I could show you that and prove it. Okay, this is basically where mud from, comes from. It's the bloody, fleshy stuff, the red and the black and the yellow. Yellow is just a mixture of the red and the black. And the red is the artery blood, the black is the vein blood. Or, you know, the deoxygenated blood. Alright, this is another friend of mine, Phil Harris. He took the 15-minute challenge. I said, you go, you're going to be able to find mud fossils in 15 minutes. This is what he found, in under 15 minutes. He saw this rock and he saw a little red spot on it. He hit it with a hammer and it cracks right on the ventricle line. And this was literally red blood. He just touched it and it's blood. This was where the blackish stuff is and this is where the yellow is. Now, an hour later, that had become oxygenated. Here's an hour later. Uh, where is it? Here it is right there. It, it turned blackish because it's become oxygenated. Now, this, this is what a lung looks like when you break open the top of them. That's all the tubing that goes down into the lung to service your, your, you know, your heart, your lungs, your, uh, all your other organs, your liver, and all that stuff. That's where the plumbing comes from. Okay, so not only do we have all the different creatures and body parts, and, giant, and these are giants. That thing is almost three feet long, and it's still got fingerprints on it. And I went inside, deep down inside, and got DNA out of it, and had the DNA tested. 
and the report was, and I, I extracted the samples, sent them off, they tested them, and they came back with that they were human, and they were mitochondrial human DNA, and they were an excellent, excellent, dense two out of the three. Excellent quality DNA was obtained from the 36 inch tip and the lung. This is the lung right here. And the 36 inch tip was the one I first showed you, that gigantic fingertip. And it is gigantic and it is in very good shape. Here it is right here. That's the fingernail. It's, it's not bad at all. That's the bumper pad that bumps to the next bone so they don't scrape. These are the blood supplies. This I smacked off and it popped right off and that's underneath is where I took the, the blood out of and that's the finger now. And the thing is almost three feet long, approximately. And this is the skin. Still got the fingerprints and the sweat pores. And I went down inside here and got the blood out of it. You know, fingertips and f fingers are extremely dense with blood. You see that? That's where I get the blood from. They're, and of course, lungs are just nothing but blood. But the fingertips are tons of blood in those. And the other thing, one I did was a mud fossil that was very muddy, but it was, again, it was at the fingertip. I took it out of there and there was a substantial amount of blood, but the other, this one here and the big fingertip were just literal, literally like taking a blood sample out of somebody. So what is it that I want? I want help. And here's the best way to get a hold of me. GSRG, which is GSR Group 10 at gmail.com. I'd love to have somebody from mainstream just investigate it, just discuss it with me, you know, cordially and, and, and respectfully. I'll be, you know, I, I'll present my evidence. I think it's very compelling. I, I mean, you know, the DNA reports, the, the anatomy, the, I have CAT scans. Uh, you know, the CAT scans weren't real illuminative, uh, illustrative, because everything's been transitioned. It's called nucleophilic substitution. And what comes in there pretty much takes over everything's invasion. But there's subtle, subtle differences. And I know how to, you know, I can see it in the CAT scans. A lot of people would miss it.